Well, warm welcome to today's talk, Friday the 20th of May. Just to give you the headlines today, what I want to talk about, then you can decide if you want to watch. And as always, of course, we'll be giving the evidence for this as we go through the video. But the headlines are BA4 and BA5 are sub-variants of Omicron. And they've basically taken over in South Africa because they're more transmissible. And they're taking over in other parts of Europe, particularly Portugal, we know where we have data. The data for the US and the UK is behind the times, but it's present there, but doesn't seem to be predominating yet. So I'm going to predict that the BA4 and the BA5 subvariants of Omicron uh, are likely to take over from the BA2 variant being more transmissible and with immune escape. There's an antigenic change, so the immune system is not recognising them as well, and people can be reinfected. I'm expecting most of those reinfections to be minimally symptomatic or asymptomatic, and there's no evidence that the BA4 and the BA5 are causing more severe disease. And then finally, we'll look at monkeypox, which is spreading actually. Monkeypox is now reported in uh, the United States, uh, several European countries, Australia, almost certainly Canada, uh, as well as the United Kingdom. I still remain unconcerned about it, but it, it could end up being a slightly bigger outbreak than I had thought. And it, it obviously can affect the individuals concerned quite severely, but it's not going to be another pandemic. Now, let's start off by looking at some of the uh, background uh, orientation. Cases per million, we're not going to discuss the testing limitations, but Australia and New Zealand clearly have a lot more than uh, the United States, United Kingdom, South Africa, Canada and uh, North Korea. Now, the testing in South Africa, of course, is never where we'd like it to be, but this does show that there's not a major takeover or not a massive increase in cases in South Africa, despite the increasing uh, takeover of the BA4 and the BA5 <laughs> variants. Um, so that's cases now. Of course, what's important is paid patients in hospital. And uh, here we see Canada is going down. The United Kingdom really is going down quite nicely now, isn't it? Good to see. Australia, levelish. Uh, we don't have data for New Zealand, unfortunately. We believe it's similar to Australia. Now, the United States and uh, South Africa, slight increases. Now, there's definitely a slight increase in cases uh, in these countries but of course South Africa is heading into winter so we'd expect more hospitalizations anyway. Uh, the increase in the United States is largely due to the variants. We believe the main variant causing the spread in the United States is the Omicron BA2.12. Uh, something dot one I think. <laughs> no dot, dot one. Um, We'll check on that. I've got it written down. But but it's variant driven and it's these variants of Omicron. Now, what we don't know yet is if these BA2 subvariants, um, the, the BA2.12, is going to be more transmissible than the 4 and the 5. It looks like they, they might be quite similar. So what variant predominates in a particular area may depend on which variant is there already, this so-called founder effect. But certainly in Europe and South Africa, I'm expecting that the BAs are fours and fives to take over and probably in the UK as well. Um, in a sense, I'm not sure it matters too much because uh, they don't seem to be causing more severe disease. The, the question is going to be the amount of reinfections. In, in Portugal, for example, there's so many cases of BA4 and 5, just the sheer volume of them might result in some excess hospitalizations, which is the, is the concern. Um, we'll come on to that in a minute. Let's let's carry on looking at the uh, the data here. Now, this is uh, patients in intensive care, and we see that since Omicron has come, um, intensive care has gone down dramatically. I mean, this graph really is shouting uh, loud and clearly that there's a very very strong temporal correlation between the increasing prevalence of Omicron and the um, reduction in uh, severely ill patients. I think that's pretty clear now. If uh, other people are giving other opinions, then assess the quality of their evidence. But this is what we're seeing on this evidence that i am got here. There's actually quite a few um, YouTube channels um, that are giving a lot of information on, on diseases and COVID and other diseases without giving the evidence. And it's a quite annoying, really. I, I put all the links for the evidence in the description. So judge for yourself, do not take my word for it. The evidence is, is there. 
Um, so that's intensive care going down during Omicron times. And here I've just got intensive care admissions uh, in the United States and the United Kingdom, just by comparators. And again, this was the peak in the United Kingdom when Omicron started about, uh, Omicron came about then. In the United States, Omicron came much later. So the reduction in intensive care in the States was that bit later. And that just puts a few figures on it. That was the UK peak there. And that was the uh, United States peak there with uh, Omicron and intensive care. But, but since, since Omicron's predominated there, we do see that nice drop in numbers in intensive care. Now, this, uh, these are the variants in the States. I, I'll show you these briefly now. Uh, this is BA2 taken over from BA1. But we see, yeah, it was one. Uh, so BA2.12.1 is becoming more predominant in the United States, whereas the one that seems to be becoming more predominant in Europe and as we've noted in South America in South Africa, the one that's becoming more predominant in South Africa is the uh, the Omicron subvariants BA four and five. So that's what I want to look at in a little bit of detail now. So let, let's go on to these. Now the best data here that I've come across is the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control, basically European CDC. Now 12th of May, okay, it's eight days ago now, but um, 12th of May. They reclassified the Omicron subvariants BA4 and BA5. There were no longer variants of interest, they're now variants of concern. Um, first detected in South Africa in January and February 2022. Interesting. Now, Omicron, of course, first came from uh, South Africa, and we still don't know where it came from. The best theory I've still seen is, is a, a fresh zoonotic spread, probably from mice. So we still haven't got to the bottom of that one yet, um, but I think that the, the reverse zoonosis is probably the most probable theory. Anyway, the BA4 and the BA5 now dominant in South Africa. Now, both lineages contain um, L. So this is, this is the 452nd position where L has been converted to R. And L is, is the amino acid leucine and R is the amino acid arginine. So this is a conversion of amino acid. Here, th this mutation here, where the F has been converted to the V, and F is code for phenylalanine, and V is code for valine. And here, R, as we noticed, is code for arginine, and Q is code for glutamine. So we see that these are single amino acid switches at these positions. So that F486 is the 486th position of the amino acid on the spike protein protein. Uh, on the spike protein has changed from F phenylalanine to V valine. And these single amino acid switches caused by um, these single uh, mutations or the accumulation of single mutations are what has caused the change in the antigen meaning that the immune system no longer recognises it as well as it did. Still recognises it pretty well, but not as well as it did. Because remember, of course, there's many other components of the virus as well as the spike protein. Uh, now, the uh, European CDC said this significantly change, changes in antigen properties of BA4 and BA5 compared to BA1 and BA2. So 4 and 5, the immune system sees somewhat differently to BA1 and uh, BA2. Now, as we said, the best data here comes from Portugal. Um, BA5, uh, increasing trend in variant proportion, so it's becoming more, BA5 is the one that's starting to increase uh, with uh, increasing casing numbers and test positivity rates. So more cases are testing positive. Portuguese National Institute of Health, as of the 8th of May, BA5 was 37%. Daily growth advantage of BA5 over BA2 is 13%. So we see it's clearly outcompeting BA2. What I don't know is if it's going to out outcompete BA2.12.1. It seems to be round about the same. So will this become predominant in the States? It may be that the BA2.12.1 uh, is going to remain the most prevalent strain in the states but we don't know yet but this seems to be go taking over in portugal at 13 percent growth advantage uh, quite significant and of course this is a population-based figure 
it's spreading through the population 13% quicker. Uh, South Africa estimated 12% uh, daily growth advantage, so pretty similar. So always good to see when data from different continents is in agreement. Uh, multiple collaboration in science is always good. BA5 will become dominant in Portugal in two days' time, according to these predictions. So as of now, it's basically the, the predominant variant in Portugal. Growth advantages for BA4 and 5. Now, why is it growing? Is it because it's more transmissible? Um, probably not. Probably not because it's more transmissible, but because there's more immune escape. So more people are becoming reinfected because their immune systems aren't recognising it as well. Will it turn out to be more transmissible as well? It may do, but we don't have data on that yet. At the moment, the data we have for the increased spread of BA5 is the fact that it's uh, able to infect greater numbers of people because their immune system is not recognising it as well. Um, it could well turn out to be more uh, spreadable, more infectious as well. We don't know yet. But that's what we do know. And that includes uh, prior infection. And it also includes uh, vaccination, particularly if this has waned over time. And of course, a lot of us were vaccinated quite a long time ago now. So there's a big waning effect with the efficacy of the vaccine in preventing symptomatic infection. BA4 and 5 are capable of uh, immune escape induced by infection with BA1. Now, this, this was a study done by the European CDC and people that weren't vaccinated. So people that had BA1 were capable of getting reinfected by BA5 symptomatically. Um, no indication that they're getting sick, but they can get the symptoms. No indication of any change in severity of BA4 or 5 compared to previous Omicron lineages, which is good. So this is a transmissibility effect probably primarily driven by immune escape seems to be what's happening so far these variants could cause a significant overall in cases in europe because people can be reinfected if covid numbers increase substantially some levels of increased hospitalization now this is what we've seen in previous waves even although the um the particular variant like omicron might be less pathogenic intrinsically causing less severe disease combined with the immunity that people have, have already had because it spread so quickly then even though there's a very small proportion of people getting sick um, a small proportion of a large number of course is, is a larger amount overall so this is the the temporary concern this should be mitigated to some extent of course by the uh, the better weather in europe now that we're heading into or, or are in now uh, now, the European CDC says countries should have plans in place for the rapid deployment of booster doses in at-risk population groups. Well, they say this, but they don't give any evidence that the vaccination is more effective against BA5, for example. The assumption would be uh, that it's going to protect um, at-risk groups, albeit for a short period of time, but they don't give any evidence for that, so... Um, incredibly we're still on the original vaccine types that were developed for the Wuhan strain way back in well, when this first started January, February 2020 uh, Our World in Data is the data we looked at there do check that out for yourself comes with a health warning, he gets stuck on it it is so interesting it lasts for ages you can stay on there for ages, hours <laughs> Uh, UK variant uh, now cast now this is this uh, the UK sorry United States apologies United States variant um, as we see BA as we predicted the BA 12 one is becoming more and more prevalent because it's got a growth advantage over BA 2 uh, no particular sign of BA 5 in the states at the moment but we'll watch that with interest now South Africa uh, interesting I oh, know that's the that's the prevalence in the United States. So, the uh, the orange is the the uh, two twelve one, taking over from the BA uh, the BA two. So there we see in the northwest, for example, it's still mostly BA two, whereas down in Florida, where it's mostly BA two twelve one. Now this is uh, South Africa. Hospitalizations aren't increasing dramatically. There's small increase, but not dramatic as we saw on the comparator graph. And those people in hospital, um, 
3.2 thousand people in hospital with COVID at the moment. Um, but um, <clears throat> not many in intensive care, not many in high care, mostly on general wards. And in the whole country, only uh, 367 requiring oxygen. And many of those, of course, have comorbidities. So uh, in terms of uh, severity of disease, nothing too alarming there um, at the moment, which is good news. Now, um, UK Health Security Agency, <clears throat> a bit out of date, <clears throat> doesn't tell us much. Um, data only goes up to the 3rd of May, which, OK, it's, they're not doing bad. It's only 17 days ago, but... BA4 in the country, they only detected 40 genomes. BA5 only detected 19 genomes. Of course, there's many, many more than this. That's what's detected. A relatively small proportion at the moment. So um, I would expect, based on the European trajectory, that there's going to be a lot more BA4, probably mostly BA5, in the UK. In the United States, it, it'll probably remain BA2, uh, 12, 1. And uh, thankfully, they're not more pathogenic. And of course, as people are infected with these new variants, they will generate immunity to coronaviruses in general, as well as the specific. So people may be getting symptomatic infection, but I'm hopeful that the amount of severe illness and hospitalizations is going to remain uh, on the descending trajectory as it is now. Now, um, just briefly, monkeypox. As we looked at uh, yesterday, uh, Massachusetts Public Health. This is the direct Massachusetts site. Always try and go back to the original data when we can. Not he said, she said, they said, might have said. Uh, this is actually from the Massachusetts Health Department. Um, an adult male with recent travel to Canada in Massachusetts. That's reported from Boston. I'm not sure where the individual lives. Australia. Uh, this is from a news source, but it is accurately reported, we believe. Uh, Victoria in Australia, man in his 30s who travelled from the UK. New South Wales, man in his 40s who'd also travelled from somewhere in Europe. So some spread there from uh, Nigeria to Europe uh, to Australia, such as the nature of flying around the world all the time. Um uh, Jennifer McQuizen at the US Centre for Disease Control and Prevention. Uh, we're seeing this expansion of confirmed and suspected cases globally. Yes, uh, we are, have a sense that no one has their arms around this. To know how large uh, an, exp uh, an, expense, uh, an expense it might be. So basically she's saying we don't know. We haven't got a grip on this. Um, but I'm not overly worried at the moment. But, but obviously there's more cases than being reported. And Marie van Kerkhove, of course, that we've talked about from the COVID pandemic, um, emerging disease and zoonosis, World Health Organization, positive cases identified in the UK, Portugal and Spain. And she didn't say this, but we've now added Sweden to that list. And she expects there will be others. I could well pan out to a few hundred cases, maybe a few thousand cases, but I'm not expecting it to be a huge a huge um we, we won't be a pandemic but there could be cases and individuals could get quite uh, quite sick so there we go omicron variants carries on changing um and we're seeing this pattern now of uh, reinfections but usually with minimal disease and the more times people get reinfected the more natural immunity they will develop and uh this could be the way that the endemicity is going to be for some time. So that's what we know at the moment and uh, thank you for watching.